Um, as it relates to Youngstown State, Youngstown State is a well-coached team. They were at the top of the conference uh, at 2-0. Uh, obviously, you know, with a great player like uh, Quinsberry, a great coach like Coach Calhoun, and obviously a rebounder like Bohannon. Uh, we had our hands, you know, tied behind our back if we, had, if we hadn't executed and blocked out. I think they started the game with three straight uh, offensive rebounds and made it a point to uh, try to crash the boards. But I thought our guys offset that by getting a couple fast break points, which kind of made them take pressure off the rebounding. And eventually, we tied our rebounding and eventually took the lead as it relates to winning the rebounding war. But I thought our guys played unbelievable basketball. We executed after, out of timeouts. We didn't get rattled. Uh, when guys went on a run, we, ex we, we accepted the challenge that they, that they did. We knew they wasn't going to go away, but we knew we had to keep fighting and get ourselves from our backs from against the wall and kind of push back, and that's what we did. Um, I think when you look at our week, we had a tough week um, after the game. And after our last game, we had a couple guys come out, come down with a virus and a stomach virus. So we couldn't practice the last four days. And for us to come out here and play the game that we played today, it shows a lot about the character of our team. It shows a lot about the discipline of our team. It shows a lot about the focus. But also it shows what a great crowd could also bring to the table. And it also shows what a great staff we have. So I'm extremely excited about us overcoming challenges that we overcame uh, with guys. Every last one of our guys had a 24-hour bug, and they could not practice. So Max, Max did a great job, our trainer, in being around the clock with these guys, getting them, you know, whatever they needed uh, from, from a medical standpoint, but also giving them confidence to go out there and perform because we don't win this game without our guys. I can draw up plays, my staff can prepare, but if our guys aren't, mentally, physically, and emotionally ready to play, we don't win this game. And, and, and I'm very excited about the outcome and how we, how we prepare. You guys had uh, four players in double digits. Can you talk about how big that is in a team win? Well, unselfishness, we preach unselfishness. So to have four guys in double digits, and we never know who's gonna, who, who that person is going to be. If you told me Tory Patton was going to be 25-8 and, you know, and 6 with just one turnover, I couldn't tell you that I would agree with you. But at that point in time, our team recognized the mismatch and recognized the execution. And our staff also recognized that and just kept saying it, hey, coach, we got to get Tory the ball in these spots. And we did that. And, and I was very excited about the way we executed after timeouts. But there's no doubt, doubt about it. The, uh, the, the balance of our team is a weapon. Um, and being able to have the depth that we have Guys are just playing for each other. They're happy for each other. And, you know, I'm just excited about the crowd. This, uh, this, this team bears no resemblance to the one that lost an exhibition game in November. It, I thought I saw some arc of improvement against DePaul, but this effort today even outstripped that. What's, what's happened in the last three weeks where this unit of, of people who, um, you know, have, have, have had to come together under trying circumstances, what's changed the last three weeks? Especially. Well, I would love to take that credit, but I can't. I'm, I'm a humble guy. I will never take that credit. It's the guys that's in the uniforms. Um, they're locked in emotionally with each other. They're locked in with the game plan. They're locked in with the opponent. They're locked in with each, with each other. And there's no doubt about it. We put these guys in situations, don't get me wrong, but our guys are good kids. They're, they're, they have unbelievable discipline, unbelievable toughness. And it's all about what we've been preaching since day one. We're trying to win championships in the classroom, in the community, and on the court. And, you know, there's, there's primary expectations and secondary expectations. And the primary expectations is what we think of ourselves. And that's the most important part. We just think of ourselves a certain way. We don't read the shot clock. We don't read the scoreboard. We don't read the uh, stat sheet. We just read each other well during the, during, the, during the course of the game. And our goal, number one goal, is to come out on top. And we did that. What was the, I mean, I mean what's the, I, I was really, 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 really <laughs> early in the uh, conference season. But, yep. you know, when you, when you get off to a slow start in the conference, you spend the whole season climbing the mountain. I mean, how much does it mean to win this game today against this team? Well, it means a lot. But... I want, I want to let you know this. 
our crowd had a lot to do with this. I'm, I'm, I'm just an adamant guy about the support. And our people came out. And I don't care how you look at the, the long, the big picture. We're preparing for March. We're not worried about the standings right now. We're worried about where we are in March because no matter what you do, you have to continue to get better. And to answer your question, I know I kind of avoided it, but to answer your question from the very beginning, we're growing together. From the beginning of the season, we're just growing together. And it takes a while for that to happen. And we're doing all we can uh, to continue to allow our guys to know how much we love them and how much we care about them. And in return, what we pour into them, they pour them back into their performances on the court. And I'm just excited, like I said, about our growth potential. But we're headed in a direction where guys are pouring into what they receive. And, and that's what you guys see. Our staff love on our guys 24 hours a day. Uh, I believe our, guy, our staff text guys when they were sick, FaceTimed them, did a lot of things that let them know how much we care. And I don't have to say things twice in a huddle. I just say it one time, and then you have players coaching each other saying, this is what coach said to do. And that, that, that makes a difference, man. That makes a big difference. And guys are being participants in their own rescue. Al Javon Eichelberger, uh, Tory Patton, uh, even Jay Lum Hill, guys are being participants in their own rescue. And I'm saying that because they could have quit a long time ago with their injuries. They didn't have to buy in. They didn't have to buy into me. But they're pouring in to us what we have been pouring into them from day one. So it's the consistent love that we're giving them. Yeah, I think Johnson has got some springs on him. Yeah. He comes with some big shots. Can yeah. you talk about his growth and yeah. his Spider, Spider, Spider Johnson. I call him Spider when he has a great job, and Deontay when, when he when he does a bad job. So tonight he's Spider, and we saw his athleticism, we saw his unselfishness, but we saw him smiling. We didn't see him stressed out. We saw him having fun. And when you have players who may not have the confidence as a upperclassman yet, you have to continue to um, you know pat them on the back. You got to hug them. You got to show them their wrongs and show them their rights. And after the game against um, up in IUPUI, I spent time, probably an hour, with Spider on the bus. And then Coach Summers double teamed him. And his performance is a byproduct of what we allowed him to learn from, that, from, from the last buzzer of our last game until now. And he approached it that way. Craig, uh, Craig played 38 minutes and handled the ball against pretty yep. much ball to ball yep. pressure the whole game. He has two turnovers. How important was his? assuredness his security with the ball the winning play. Let me tell you this, Craig Bodwan is a Dean's List three point plus GPA from a junior college who got signed in August. So I'm proud of where he is in that perspective and if we win in the classroom, we're going to win on the court. And that gives guys confidence in, in the big picture. So his confidence is soaring at an all time high and he knows that we trust him with the ball. He's making great decisions. You don't lead the league after three games averaging, what, 9.8.4 or something assists, and then only turn the ball over once or twice. But once again, first game of the season, Notre Dame College or whatever exhibition, we're learning each other. And our mistakes was, was byproduct of us not knowing the game. When you look at guys playing their first Division I game versus their 15th, we said all along that at the end of the first semester, you're no longer first-year guys. You're second-year guys at that point. You've played enough games to, to be established, and you got to go out there and do that. And that's what, that's what Craig has been doing. Can you talk about the 36 of 24 actually points in the paint? Well, we only made three threes. Um, it's an identity of our team to try to win that category. Um, teams know we are last place in shooting three-pointers. There's no doubt about it, but my team, our team, did not overextend themselves and shoot 10 three-pointers. If we shot 10, if we had 10 three-point attempts, we would have lost this game. But we did not give in to what they wanted us to do. We did what we wanted to do. And whenever you're facing a great team like Youngstown State, who's well coached and who's defensive oriented, um, you know, they're going to try to take things away. And they did take a lot of things away from our last game. They did a great job scouting, and we had to adjust. Um, and, you know, so that's, that's probably what, what we see in that situation. I, don't, don't take it the wrong way, but when the season started, 
I hate to use a better word, the prevailing wisdom was that given the circumstances of your coming in here, given the outflow of talented players, that this, I don't want to say this is going to be a lost season because it wasn't going to be that, but it was going to be a really, really difficult season. Well, is it better than you thought it would be? And is it still difficult? Well, I, want, I appreciate uh, President Sands and uh, Scott Garrett believing in me. I appreciate Leonard Hamilton for preparing me. I appreciate the staff for believing in me to be their boss, uh, trusting me with their family, trusting me with, you know, their careers. But ultimately, I, 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 I appreciate the guys that are buying in. No matter how you look at it, there's not going to be an asterisk at the end of the season. And that's how we approach it. It's not going to be in parentheses, Coach Giggs got the job in August. That's not going to be in parentheses. So teams aren't going to feel bad about us having the flu. I told our guys that it's not about anything else. We have primary expectations. The secondary expectations, I'll leave that up to you guys, but we have primary expectations that we'll stay focused on. And the big picture is our guys are coachable. Um, they love each other. They love the staff. They love the administration. And they love this university. But I'll say this, the crowd yeah. made the difference. <laughs> hey, make sure you put in the headlines, crowd made the difference. How, how difficult is it? You step off the plane in August for the World Championship, then you have to learn the whole scenario and try to put it in game form in the basketball sense. How, how difficult is it? I'll, I'll write a book in about 15 years. <laughs> uh, I'll have Scott Garrett have the intro of the book, the forward. That's the forward. Yeah. <laughs> He'll have that, that part of it. But there's no doubt in my mind. I'll tell you guys this. I didn't do anything basketball-wise at all with the team when I first got the job. And the first thing we did was brought in a, a, a sports psychologist by the name of Dr. Joe Carr who's an unbelievable team builder. We worked with him at uh, Florida State. And I knew deep down inside that to, to get out what I could get out of our situation at Cleveland State University, no matter if I got the job in May or you know August, it was something that I knew I would do when I first got my opportunity to be a head coach. And that's what we did. And you know, I just thank the administration for allowing us to you know, have, have the creativity and follow that creativity and give us a platform to do certain things like team building. And the other thing is people have been here and they held my hand. I had people to the left and right of me with flashlights, although it was dark. I had no clue what was going on. They was leading the way. And, you know, I'm a praying man, so I prayed every night. My wife would tell you I slept in this office nonstop. I was operating on international time zones and domestic time zones, but – there's no doubt about it, the relationships that we have established and the staff has established throughout their careers helped us identify the kids that were right for Cleveland State. And when I say that, you look at the guys that we signed, I, I don't know where they would have gone. They didn't sign in the late signing period, but we were able to identify some guys out there and knew that they fit what we wanted and knew, what, knew that they fit the culture that we wanted to build here at uh, CSU. Um. Tom confirmed for me that, that that was Alex sitting at the end of the bench, right? Did he enroll early? Alex Oglesby. Yeah. Um, is he an early enrollee? Alex Oglesby, and this is what I'll tell you guys. Yeah, he he he, he enrolled as your, early. As your semester starts? Yep. Our semester starts in, in a week. So talk about identifying the right kids for Cleveland State University. That recruiting class, uh, Mabor Majuk, uh, Des Moines Hodge, Yael Hill and Alex Oglesby are Cleveland State University kids. And when you have a kid like Alex Oglesby who calls you and say, Coach, I'm like, what's up, Alex? Let's FaceTime. So he FaceTimed. I say, what's going on? Coach, what if I graduate? Can I enroll early? I said, you hit a home run. <laughs> kid wants to be here. And that says a lot about the kids that the, our staff is identifying in the recruiting, on the recruiting trail, and kids that fit. This is a kid who could have won a state championship at the Rock School down in Gainesville, who wanted to be here. 
I don't know when the last time that has happened at Cleveland State University. I don't know. But there was nothing that prohibited him from staying there. This is a kid that wanted to be here. Is Rock a four-year right? It's a four-year. He graduated early. Yeah. It isn't a prep academy? No. Okay. It's not a prep school. He is going to be early enrolled. Yeah, he's here on campus. Got got approved today. That's why he was able to sit on a bench. Outside of that, he would have been up top in a crowd. So our compliance does a great job keeping me informed on the things that we can or cannot do, and they did a good job. He's enrolled. He'll have his class schedule probably in the next day, but uh, he's cleared through the clearinghouse. I'm not trying to – It's okay. I love your questions. I'm, 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 yes, it's, it's a good answer. <laughs> I'm, I'm not suggesting that the bar is set unrealistically high, but is this team ahead of where you thought it might be? Given all Ex the circumstances this, that you – let me, let, me tell you, let me tell you this. I don't look at circumstances because at the end of the day, I wasn't worried about what the secondary uh, expectations were. You know, I, I looked at it as a great opportunity to partner with Harlan Sands and Scott Garrett. I hired an unbelievable staff who I thought could help us. Now, the big picture is we identified guys who could endure this situation. Tory Patton was here already, but he automatically became my kid. Jalen Hill became my kid. Spider became my kid. Al Javon became my kid. Cash became my kid. And we added kids around them to help with their strengths and their weaknesses. I did an unbelievable job of watching film. I'll pat myself on the back. But I'll tell you this. It doesn't work without guys buying in, man. And, and I'll, I'll be the first to say this. We have some great kids. We have a 3.0 GPA. Put that in the story. We got a team GPA of 3.0. That's great. We had six guys on the dean's list. You tell me, were you expecting those stats either? Those are the stats I'm proud of. And you mentioned uh, Craig, like nobody brought him in August. Craig was at home in August, trying to figure out what school he was going to go to. Like, what was he looking at? Like, I didn't worry about where he was looking at. I, I, don't, I don't set myself on who's recruiting this kid. Through our relationships, through our relationships, uh, his, his junior college coach, Coach Rusty, uh, he, he was in a Jayhawk conference, which is the top Midwest JUCO conference in the country, behind, I would say, the Panhandle in Florida. But that conference is a great conference and he was first second team he was an academic guy and he had over 100 plus assists to you know during during his two years so you guys tell me why wouldn't he be already signed but I'm not worried about who else is recruiting him mm -hmm. that becomes secondary I was concerned about character mm -hmm. what he wanted to become after bas after the basketball stopped bouncing and the last thing I talked about was basketball with him. I never promised him anything as it relates to time. It was a kid that wanted to be here. So now the byproduct of what we see when we come out of timeouts is a kid that wants to be here. And we have built a great culture, I believe, and we're going to continue to get there. Um, but like I said, our leadership, from the, it, it goes from the top down in our en entire athletic department. Uh, you look at the success of our women's program. That goes hand in hand with our guys wanting to win as well because they're they're, they're, they're peers. Yeah. They see them every day. Mm -hmm. We share the gyms with them. Mm -hmm. You don't think that's rubbing off? They want they want that. Mm -hmm. They see the ten game winning streak that the women's and Coach Killsmeyer, those guys went through, mm -hmm. and our that rubs off, man. It's, it's 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 some it's some residue. So it's not just one thing that plays. You know, it's a lot of things that has to fall in line and and. You know, our administration, our fans, mm -hmm. you know, they have all, you know, bought into it and they've supported. Uh, Coach Calhoun's immediate post-game summation, I, I think, would have been warmly welcomed by you. Basically, the summation of it was that they out everything us. And you said he out, said that? That they out everything us. That, that Did Coach that. Calhoun say that? Yeah, he said that. Oh, I didn't he, know that. That's a great comment. Thank you. Where he thought that you them, 50-50 yeah. balls, the whole, the whole thing. I mean, what, what does it mean to you to have well, a coach who was exactly where you were two years ago say they, they just beat us every which way? Coach Calhoun is a great coach. Um, he comes from great pedigree. 
um, in this coaching fraternity that we're in. Uh, I'm not going to guess and say that's what he said. I'm sure we'll have conversations like we always do when we see each other. Uh, but I, I want to thank him for his compliments from this game. Uh, but I know he's going to prepare those guys. We played them twice now, mm -hmm. and hopefully a third time. And he's going to use this as motivation. There's no doubt about it. He's not going you know, just allow. He will show his team what took place, and they'll be prepared to play us when we go to Youngstown. I just thought the ball bounced our way a couple times that, you know, and our guys fought. Like I told you, the discipline and the focus that our guys had based off that uh, adversity of being stricken with that 24-hour virus, um, you know, that just says something about our character. What do you think you about Trey Goldmillion? Trey Goldmillion? Trey, Trey is a um, – you know, he's one of our tough guys. He's a guy that, you know, doesn't need the ball in his hand. He's a defender. He's a rebounder. Toughness is one of his talents. And I, I, I just think, you know, he, he did some things that willed us to a win. He's another kid that we signed in, in, in August that I'm extremely excited about his future. He's only a sophomore. And the contributions he's made on and off the court has been great. I believe he, too, is a Dean's List kid. So you tell me what should be in the headline, his toughness, his points, or his GPA. I'll put his GPA with that any day of the week because that's what allows us to go uh, have an after time out and he execute because he believes so much in Cleveland State University and, 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 and our coaching staff.